Hey guys, Sister Bet here. We're going to be discussing abomasal bloat today, a really common cause of death in hand reared little baby lambs and goat kids. Stick around, I'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, Sister Bet here. I am Sears. So today we're going to be discussing something that's Super close to my heart, abomasal bloat. Now every year I hold my breath going through the spring lamb and kidding season, waiting for that inevitable influx of emergency abomasal bloat cases in young, hand-raised, very much loved lambs and goat kids that will literally die in front of you before you've had any chance to do anything. And every year it breaks my heart, the amount of misinformation and misunderstanding that there is out there. So this video couldn't be made soon enough as far as I'm concerned. Abomasal bloat is a condition where orphaned, bottle-fed lambs and goat kids will develop severe abdominal distension and die, usually within half an hour to an hour of a milk feed. The cause is an overgrowth of a gas-producing bacteria living inside the abomasum, which is the baby's stomach. These bacteria eat lactose and they produce gas with it. So they eat lactose and they produce gas with that food. So we have a large milk feed, a heavy hit of lactose, which is the sugar in milk. The bacteria go wild and the large amount of gas distends the stomach so much so that it cuts off the blood supply and kills the lamb or goat kid. Now I do want to mention here that abomasal bloat is absolutely not the only thing that causes a distended abdomen in little ones. We could be looking at obstructions, nerve issues, ruminal bloat, which is a separate uh, area of the stomach altogether, intersusceptions, um, worms, but many of these causes are still scary. So if your little one has a distended abdomen, it needs to see a vet immediately for an ultrasound and blood work to see what's going on on the inside. Now if it happens quickly after a meal, you need to drive fast, okay? Call them on the road to let them know that you're coming. We can lose up to 30% of hand reared lambs to this disease, so prevention is absolutely key to protect your little ones. And that's really what we're here to discuss today, so let's get into it. It all comes down to feeding. We never see this condition, never, in the wild, in naturally raised lambs on the mum. It's just not a thing. They would naturally drink a few mil every hour, so they never develop this overgrowth of bacteria. It just doesn't happen. So to really hone this home, a one to two week old lamb would naturally be drinking from mum on average 36 times a day. Isn't that insane? Even by six or seven weeks, it would still be drinking 14 times a day. So you can see how we run into issues with our three times a day. So obviously your first option is to try and mimic this as closely as possible. The back of the milk powder packet is not always a reliable source of information and recommendation. Lambs are born anywhere between one and five kg or, or even on either side of that. So you really need to calculate how much you should be feeding specifically for your little one's body weight. Make sure you're not overdoing it. You should be feeding 10 to 15% of the body weight across a 24 hour period, divided up into as many small feeds as you can manage, ideally six to eight. So for example, a two kg lamb needs 300 mil over 24 hours if you're feeding six times. So this is six feeds of 50 mil. Of course your little one's growing, so you need to weigh and adjust regularly. I recommend usually weighing weekly. Now I know that realistically many people are fitting in feeds around school and work, but just know that three or four big feeds a day of normal milk is putting you at high risk of abomasal bloat, which is okay, it just means that you need to choose option two. And option two is to yogurtize your milk. And this is the first huge myth that I need to debunk. Adding probiotic acidophilus yogurt to the milk at the time of feeding is not yogurtizing your milk. This is actually doing the opposite. This is doing nothing to prevent bloat and may actually be making it worse the bacteria in the yogurt are in fact gas producing bacteria, which a lot of them are. To yogurtize, to truly yogurtize your milk, it means you add your probiotic yogurt, unsweetened acidophilus, and then set the milk aside in a warm spot for 12 to 24 hours at least to ferment. And what we're doing here is we're allowing that acidophilus bacteria to eat all the lactose, produce all of the gas that they want, but do it in the safety of the hot water cupboard, right? Before feeding it to the lamb. So by the time we actually give it to the lamb, we're essentially putting them on a lactose-free diet. The bacteria have already used all of the lactose and produced the gas out in the real world. There's no more lactose in there. So your lamb is now officially going to be on a lactose-free diet until weaning. Yogurtizing milk is the only proven method of preventing abomasal bloat. So those are your options there. Either feed to a natural schedule or yogurtize your milk. And some other things to consider here are vaccinating. There are a number of bacteria that have been implicated as the culprit in abomasal bloat, and we don't know exactly who they are. We couldn't bet our lives on it, but there are some that are, that are highly suspicious as being causes. So the more broad the vaccine, the better for your clostridial vaccines. 
I would be ditching the five in one to be honest and going for something like a Covexin 10 which cover 10 clostridial bacteria. You really want to be covering Sarkeen and make sure that one's in there. You can do this from two weeks old if you're using Covexin 10, it's labelled for from two weeks old. Make sure you have an appropriate flow from the bottle and teat, so when you hold it upside down the teat should drip milk but not flow. If it's damaged or has a hole that's too large in the end, then the milk may flow too quickly and this can predispose to a different kind of bloat called ruminal bloat. It's not abomasal bloat, it's not going to kill them as quite as quickly but it is something to watch for. Now make sure you're offering hard feed such as digestible grain, hay or at least something for them to graze on from about five days old, just a few days old is, is absolutely fine. And we need to do this to help the grown up chamber of the stomach adjust to grown up food, otherwise we can get another type of bloat called ruminal atony and this is when we switch suddenly from milk to grown up food. Again, not abomasal bloat but something else that can get confused with. Right, I'm going to leave it there for today guys, now I will post a recipe for how to yogurtize your milk in the link below and remember feed to a natural feeding schedule or yoga ties. Okay guys, I will see you later. Please go ahead and jump over to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe, um, thumbs up, share if you found it was useful for you, and um, I will see you for the next one. All right guys, bye bye.